Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to use Zoom. So when we start online school, this becomes way easier to communicate with students. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to zoom.com or zoom.us, I suppose. Uh, and up in the top, you're just going to click sign up. It is free. Uh, you're going to enter your work email. There may be a small download. I don't really remember. But then when you've done that, uh, it's also very easy to add this Zoom scheduler. I'll provide the link in this video uh, for you to add it as an extension to your desktop. And I'm going to show you how to use Zoom a little bit with your students. So let's assume you have this installed. You have the extension on your Google Chrome browser. The first thing you're going to do is click your Zoom scheduler up here and you're going to hit either schedule a meeting to make it certain times and you'll get a link to share with people or you can click start a meeting. So I'm going to go ahead and start a, a meeting with the video on. There you go. So you're going to have prompts like this, open zoom, boom, here we go. Hey, so we're going to join with computer audio, right? So, with Zoom, you have the capability to do a lot of things. Uh, we can share our screen uh, and we have a lot of options with this. Uh, you can share if you have multiple screens attached, cool. If you want a whiteboard, you can do an iPhone or an iPad by using AirPlay, uh, any of your browsers you have open. Uh, so this way you can walk students through your uh, whatever document you're going, if you're reading a text, if you are working out a problem, uh, you can do it with portions of the screen, second camera, if any of you brought your document cams home, which you might want to do that next week when you go to school, or you can even add files from Google Drive, which is really nice. You're going to have to log in to Google Drive in order to do that. So in order to add more people to this, you're going to click this button right here, invite. Uh, and I choose copy URL uh, and then I can then add it to Google Classroom uh, on the wall. However, if you want to invite your PLC members, you might just want to send it through your default email. It's going to open an email for you. Boom, there's a link. So Zoom is like this. You're going to be talking. Anybody who joins in will be over here on the side. Ignore my nerdy room, please. Uh, and you can do a chat. Uh, you can send a message to everyone, or if you have other people in this room, uh, their names are gonna show up down here and you can send private messages to them. So they can do that to you as well. If you say, um, add your closure to this side of the screen. Um, cool, you can add files from Google Drive, Dropbox that way. And you can change who your participants can chat with. That's nice. No one host only, everyone publicly. So if you don't want your students uh, talking to each other privately, you might want to hit everyone publicly. If you only want them to be talking to you, you got host only. That's cool. Um, another thing you're going to see once you have students around is this. Let's hide our chat real quick. Hmm, manage participants. When you've clicked manage participants right here, everybody who's in your chat room is going to show up okay as you can see for me i've got a microphone and a camera there you can turn off people's cameras you can mute them but it's really important that you go down to these settings here more and you uncheck these if you turn these things off students by default can turn them back on so you probably want to check that so they can't rename themselves ridiculous thing they can't unmute themselves um, you can mute them on entry that way they're not making crazy noises and then you allow them to talk when you unmute them um, I don't know about this enter exit chime deal I don't know that I'd want that going on while I'm trying to talk to people uh, you can obviously add reactions here but the reason this is such a great platform is because if you do decide to do your teaching this way and you have students that are asking you questions you have the option to record so as you can see uh, here, that okay, I'm now recording this, uh, and I'm gonna have this video. I can upload it to YouTube or uh, just to Drive, and then I can put it in Google Classroom for all students to view later if maybe they weren't able to watch at this particular time. 
All right, so I'm gonna stop that recording because I'm already recording here. Uh, see, it says it'll be converted to MP4 when the meeting ends. Uh, now, let me show you a couple other things. If I am gonna share my screen and I'm gonna do a whiteboard, then I'm gonna see all the videos here. Uh, your screen, the participant screen may look different. It might just be the whiteboard and then this video over to the side. But you can draw on this, so I can do uh, 3x squared. My handwriting is awful on this. I have not yet mastered it. But if you have a touch screen, that might be a little bit better for you. Uh, over, let's go pi, because that seems like a math thing that you would do. Okay, so we can stamp and you can show people like, oh, pay attention to the blue arrows. Or here's my laser pointer dilly doodle. Uh, you can emphasize things and all your students have these tools as well. So they're going to be able to make notes too. Uh, but you can clear viewers drawings really easily. You can clear all drawings or you can clear my drawings. And then you can even save these drawings and upload them as well. Uh, you can add these to your docs or you can add them to drive files and add them to classroom. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen up here at the top. Hey, um, I can also show different windows. So let's say I want to look at my web browser. Uh, I'm looking at documents, my Zoom scheduler, all this, and I'm showing my students this the whole time too. It's very nice. If you are recording your video, you're gonna need to be sure that after it's over, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and end our meeting in meeting for all then you're going to have this convert meeting recording going on. So as it converts, you are going to choose a place you want to put this. I'm going to put it on my desktop because that's an easy place for me to find. Or you can make a new folder, click OK. And once it's done, boom, it will show up right here and you can rename it there. That's what I would suggest for you before you add it to um, before you add it to and then you are good to go. This is super convenient. Uh, it makes it very easy to talk to your students. You're gonna be able to invite them into your classroom to ask you questions. Maybe this is how you give instruction. That's cool, record it, post it later for anybody that doesn't have it. Maybe this is what you do during your office hours. So I'm gonna be available for a couple hours a day and I'll just have this running. And if a student hops in to talk to me, boom, I'm gonna see them over here on the side. I'm gonna be able to talk to them about anything that's going on, any questions they have, because guess what? Students are gonna have questions. I'm sure you're gonna have questions. So when you do, send me an email, uh, a text message, a smoke signal, whatever is working at this time, and we're gonna make sure that you're taken care of. But I wanted you to get thinking about this before we start back getting crazy. All right, guys, good luck to you. Have a great day, stay beautiful, all that other nonsense. Peace out.